Meredith Coolis, and these are my teammates, Yuvali Don, Terry Horowitz, and Layla Loezer. And for our capstone project, we made Seven Cities. Seven Cities is the browser-based recreation of Seven Wonders, the multiplayer strategy board game. There are a few reasons why we wanted to make this game. First of all, it has a very large fan base and currently no online version. Second, because there's so much going on in the game, it can often become messy, and it can be difficult to keep track of which trades and purchases are valid. In our version, your moves are limited based on what the program calculates you're actually capable of doing. Sword overview of how to play the game, every player is randomly assigned an ancient city, which is, is associated with one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And every player is randomly assigned resource cards, which they can buy or trade with other players to build structures in their city and win points. Points can also be won by build, building up their military and winning wars, which happen at the end of every round. And here's Yuval with more information on how he built our game. So to start a Seven Cities game, all you need to do is write your name and choose your game name, which is what we'll use to coordinate you with the other people you want to play against. And once the first player sees that all of their friends are in the room, they can hit start game, and then everyone is going to be generated their own special city or board. So our first player has Ephesus, our second player has Alexandria, and our third player has the beautiful, beautiful Babylon. And if you look at the top of the screen, you can see some important information, like who your neighbors are and what your name is. Now, real-time gameplay is really an essential part of Seven Cities, since the game state is constantly changing, and all the players' UIs need to change also to reflect what's happening. So, for example, once every player plays their card, everyone gets dealt a new hand and also needs to be able to see what everyone else just did. So to implement this, we created our own custom socket system using Socket.io. We didn't use an external platform to manage updating the, state, the game state, and instead we built all the, all the methods custom-made to exactly what we needed. And so all the communication between the front and the back end, as well as between the players, like in our little chat, all happens using our own custom Socket.io system. So now Terry's going to tell you a little bit about some of what we focused on. So something we spent a lot of time on while building this game was thinking about game logic, all the logic happens in the back end. So anytime a player selects a card, um, the logic done in the back end um, processes all the possible moves, and that's what we present to the user in the front. Um, so you can trade. Uh, there's a lot of different costs and different functionality tied to each card. So any move that a player makes can affect their neighbors and themselves for the next round. Um, like here, this player can afford some and also needs to trade for stone and ore. Um, and so we also included some logic in the front end because when they make a selection like this player is going to do that is not an accurate selection, we need to make sure we block that as well. Um, the other thing we concentrated on was learning about relational databases. Here at Grace Hopper, we concentrated on Mongoose and MongoDB, but we decided to implement a relational database uh, Postgres and use SQLize for our data modeling. Um, it also made a lot of sense for our program because we really wanted a lot of associations within all of our data models. Um, and here's Layla with more on game interaction. Thanks, Terry. OK, so at this point of the game, the players have already added some cards to their board, meaning that they have uh, resources and buildings in their cities. And they might have war cards. So at the end of each era, a war happens. And uh, we display the points and um, uh, which players have won or lost based on their military cards. Another feature we implemented was the ability to see other players' boards. So if you click on the icons at the top of the screen, you can see your neighbors' boards and resources and what they have built and therefore made your strategy decisions based on that. All the animations you see uh, in the interface are custom built with uh, HTML and CSS, and we have not used any external libraries to design our graphic interface. Our main takeaways from this project were uh, the great learning experience of using a relational database, build your own socket system, and also creating the very complex game logic. We also enjoyed uh, working together in the process of envisioning and developing our application. So please go to 7-cds.com and have fun playing with your family and friends. Thank you.